Okay, so today we've got a really, really special boat for you. This is the brand new Cobalt R8. You can't, you can't make it up, can you, Dan? The second we start filming, an old transit comes out of the car park. Look, he's, look, he's in no rush at all, look. Look at him. All right, mate. There he goes. See you, bud. See ya. All right. Um, <laughs> Cobalt R8, this is brand new. Uh, we took it in part exchange in its delivery bag. I cannot believe the quality. So today we're gonna to give you a full review of the Cobalt R8. And I'm also gonna do all the costings, how much fuel it uses, how fast it goes, all the finance prices, the whole lot. So let's jump on and do it. Okay, so we're gonna start at the back. And you pull this little stainless bolt out. Did you see that, Dan? You pull that, and that gives you a little platform. Isn't that nice? Oh, this boat, it just oozes quality. Look at this rail. I mean, this is the kind of rail we get on like a 60 or 70 foot boat. Everything's just really chunky. By the way, this color is called Bayside Blue. Do you know that? It's nice, isn't it? Very pretty. It's very pretty, very pretty colour. Right, so let's jump on board. Yeah, yeah, we haven't fitted the ladder yet. I think we haven't PDI'd it yet. But I've got some new socks, Dan. Let's have a look then. These are my American, can you see? They're an American flag. And I got these while I was in Florida at the Sea Ray factory a few weeks ago. And I think it's very apt because this boat is built in America too. So are you going to come and join me that, on yeah. board? While you're doing that, you're getting on board, I'll hold the camera. Ooh. I get to get on the camera? Yeah, we'll put you on the camera a sec. And we'll just film down there. My socks aren't as nice as... Aren't they? No, yours are it's a standard, but they tell what day is, and today is Thursday. It isn't, it's Monday, mate. You don't know what you're doing, do you? There's another sea ray there, look while you're here, that's... That's a beautiful boat, it's in black. Okay, so back over to me. So let's start the tour. Right, so we're on board the boat and the first thing you notice is the feeling of space. Now, if you see me walking funny on this boat, it's because I'm avoiding the wet patches on the carpet because it never stops raining in England. So we had to get water off the cover this morning. So I'm trying to avoid getting wet socks, but it's got a huge, deck space here and I love all the little features and we're going to start with the little sinky to wash your hands and that's nice I'm not going to test it but that folds away there it's a really nice stainless steel fitting and then you've got a little cupboard here for all your barbecue bits and pieces for the beach it hasn't got a barbecue but you can put all your bits and pieces in there and there's really nice stowage here and what I like about it is, if you notice, it's on stainless hinges with gas struts. Now, how many manufacturers bother? Oh, look who it is. Here comes Mr. Happy. What time did you pull this? He's got mute, he's got mute on us, Dan. <laughs> he's, ignoring he's, us? he's ignoring us. Oh, that's yeah, really it's professional. A, that's Monday morning, isn't it? <laughs> um, what I like is they've got all these gas struts, so you can just quickly lift them up and put stuff away. Um, all the trip switches are in here, which is quite neat. Loads of cup holders, and I love this. Can you see this quilted, Dan? Got this quilted kind of finish in here. And there's the big stereo speakers. I'll show you the engine in a minute. We've got another storage area here. Oh God, I've got a wet foot. God, how much water did you spill? Um, got a, a, the igloo um, ice storage box here for all your cold drinks, which is a good size. And even that's got a little hinge on it as well. Although no gas struts. There's a place for everything on this boat. The seats, I can't, it's difficult to explain in, um, on, the, on the film, but the quality of the, 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 the upholstery, does this come over? How does that work then? Oh, pull it. What's that do? Oh, that gets to your water tank, look. 
water tank down there. The quality of the upholstery and stitching is fantastic. And look at that big handrail. Now we've got a little surprise for you in here. Big stainless catch. Look at this catch down. Look, big substantial catch. And then in here is a little toilet. Actually, I'm going to get in there. Well, I'm going to get the props out. Get the props out. Let's put the props there. It's got duo props. You know how I can tell? <laughs> I've got one engine and I've got two props. Right, let me get on the toilet. Oh, it's a porcelain toilet, not a plastic one, Dan. Do you know the difference? No. One's made of China, son. No, not made in China. Ooh, it's quite nice. Little window. Shout window. Give that a go. Oh, it's quite small. Oi, get the feathers in! That works quite nice. That's to let the breeze in and the smells out. And I guess there's no sort of floss testing in. Can't here. floss test in this one, Dan, you're right. And it's electric flush, which is nice. And we've got some lights here that tell us about water pressure and stuff. And it's all lined. There's no bare GRP which you might see in other brands. Okay, just putting these boxes back. So, who do you think this guy is, Dan? Uh, Mr. Cobalt? No, oh. this is Mr. Mercury Marine. And that is a very cool picture. Why don't we wear hats anymore? We should wear hats, shouldn't we? Bowler hats. Like London, which is just down the road. Only 30 miles down the road, London, everyone. Just that way, somewhere. Okay, so over to the helm. The feeling of quality continues. Look at these stainless strips here, Dan. And the adjusting, adjustments for the seat. And the stainless hoops here and the big recess. And also, you've got to love this badge. Look at this. You've got to come around this way, Dan. Look at the USA badge. You've got to come around here. You've got to get it full. I mean, that is the best USA badge I've ever seen. Isn't it? Have you seen a better one? Yeah. And while you're down there, Dan, we've got the arch power button, we've got the electric windlass, and in here we've got the trim tabs, and we've got active trim on this boat What's by that? Mercury. What's active, trim? active trim means as people are walking around the boat drinking their beer, mm -hmm. it automatically adjusts the angle so that you're not going on the lean. So that's pretty good. And then you can see the dashboard, it's super, super sleek two Garmin screens, all these really easy to use uh, buttons. We've got a little cubby hole here. We've got the Fusion here. And again, just another little detail. It's much easier for manufacturers to just bolt the units on afterwards. But here, they've countersunk the Fusion and they've countersunk the Garmin screens, which I think is a very nice detail. Now this boat is fitted with the um, wakeboard tower stroke power arch. And you could undo it by just turning these knurled knot, um, knobs, knobs here. I'm not gonna do it by the way. And then, as it took me 20 minutes to find earlier, you go in here, Dan, and there's a hidden switch. Look, they hid it right up there, can you see it? Up and down, can you see it? Up there, up and down. And that, that lifts the arch up and down. Now, in England, we don't need to lower the arch, but I can only assume in America, you have to lower the arch for certain bridges and stuff. Or maybe if you're towing, or towing, yeah. Um, but here, we haven't got any restrictions. On the Thames, you might. Um, but anyway, it's got a powered arch, and it's all included in the very reasonable price of 222,000 pounds, excluding VAT. So let's go and look at the bell. So Dan just corrected me. The price actually is 229,000 pounds, excluding VAT, which is still very reasonable. Okay, so the fun continues at the bow, and the things I like here, compared to other boats, is, first of all, look at these little armrests, Dan. God, this carpet is so wet. Oh, I'm going to have wet feet all day. Um, you've got these little armrests here, and just like the, if you come forward, just like the bow, sorry, the cockpit, if you lift the seat up, see? You've got more storage now. Look at the size of that. 
they're cushion boxes, they're cushions, infills, but that is huge. You've also got, they've even thought, look, there's a USB point here, so your friends on board can plug in and stream their music. You've got this lovely quilting, grab rails everywhere, and we've got a little stainless anchor. My feet are soaked there. And look down, if you put your neck over the bow, we've got a lovely stainless anchor there as well. Look at that, super shiny. And then we've also got all these lovely cabinets, which are hinged for all your skis under the floor. God, my feet are soaked. I was trying to avoid the wet patches. This front one is totally soaked. And then you've got another one. If you come back here, Dan, I'll lift them from this end. We've got another little one here. Oh, look at that. Look, it's got little rack holders as well. That would take a lot of skis and weight boards, wouldn't it? And then if you thought, well, I've got enough storage, there isn't, there's another one here, which you can't open. One, oh, there, that's it. An extension of that one. So it's, and notice all GRP underneath, gas rams. You do definitely get what you pay for with these boats, but I've left the best till last. There's the old man. DB? All right, DB. He's silent as well. He's silent as well. Silent? Everyone's silent on Monday morning. <laughs> right, so I've left the best to last. I'm going to show you the engine. So let's look at the engine. Right, we haven't connected the batteries, so we've had to manually lift the lid. Dan, show them the engine. It's a big block V8. It's 8.2 litres. It's got 380 horsepower. So, oh my God. Oh, my feet are soaked. Right, so let's move into the summaries. Okay, so let's go through the cost of this boat. So section one is buying the boat. So this boat costs 229,000 XVAT. And the reason we advertise it XVAT is because one, it's brand new with warranties. And two, if you're a UK customer and you're buying it for use outside of the UK, i.e. Spain or Portugal, you can buy it XVAT. So a deposit of 30%, which is what the banks require is 69,000. The finance advance therefore is 160,000 and the payments per month are about £1,600. This is based on a 15-year loan with a straight-line repayment, and April 23, the interest rates have gone up to about 8.7%, because I checked this morning. So um, £1,600 per month and £69 grand down gets you this quarter of a million pounds cobalt, which I don't think's too bad. So let's move on to fuel right so section two is fuel so we always do these figures based at about 20 knots so the fuel burn of this single 8.2 litre 380 horsepower v8 mercruiser is about 70 litres per hour at that speed but if you open it to wide open throttle whop no woff throttle what what that's what they call it <laughs> monday morning um, it will burn double and more than that. So 70 litres per hour, 20 knots. The fuel price this month, April 23, for petrol in the UK is about £1.75 a litre. So the cost of this boat is £122 an hour, and that's at 20 nautical miles. So it's cost you £122 to do uh, 20 nautical miles. Average UK or worldwide use is about 50 hours per year. Um, I adjust the fuel figures now so that you leave the marina at eight knots and then you open it up down the river. So the adjusted cost per annum is about £4,700 per year if you do 50 hours. Now, considering it's an 8.2 V8 that burns a lot of fuel, I don't think that's too bad. Okay, so section three is fixed costs. But before I go into those, if you like our videos, please, please press the subscribe button and the little thumbs up and bell icon. 
because then you'll get an alert when one of our silly videos comes online. So section three is fixed costs. So um, I've done this with it based in Spain. So to keep this boat in Spain will cost you about £6,000 per year. The servicing of that engine and drive, it's a Duoprop Alpha, sorry, it's a uh, Bravo drive, Duoprop, is about £1,800 per year. Maintenance, cleaning, polishing, you know, bits and pieces that needs maintenance is about £1,000 per year. Insurance is about £1,000 per year too. So your total fixed cost, including your berth, which is most of the cost, is £9,800, which again isn't too bad. Okay, so section four is variable costs. So the first one is always difficult, which is depreciation. Depreciation, I think, on a boat like this in year one is going to be about 19, 20,000. So let's call it 19,000. I've told you the fuel is 4,700 with 50 hours use. The finance is 19,200 pounds per year, with that's the 1,600 pounds a month we went through. So that gives you total variable costs of 42,900. But remember, if you just pay for it and you don't use much fuel, then you could have that down to just a few thousand pounds. So it's whether you're financing it and if you're using it a lot, etc. Anyway, not too bad again. Okay, so the last section is section five, JB's measure of pleasure, where I give you this, my personal idea of the scores on how this fares in different categories. So the first thing is accommodation. Well, of course, it's not a, a boat you stay on overnight. So we use the accommodation to describe the space for a day ski boat like this. And I think with all the hinged lockers, all the access under the floor and all the lovely seating, I give it a solid nine out of 10. Style, well, Dan, if you step back and look at this boat in Bayside Blue with the red stripe, which is painted, I think you'll agree it's a pretty funky looking boat. So I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Running costs. Well, you can never say that a V8 Mercruiser is economical, um, but if you are gentle with this big beast, I think you will be quite surprised. So uh, in a good way that is. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 for running costs. Quality, well, everything you touch on this boat. Look at this vent, Dan. Look at this breather. Look at this breather, it's stainless. Look at the badge. The stainless uh, gunnel striping, the uh, gunnel stripping, the cleats, everything is beautifully made. And uh, don't you just love that badge as well, Dan? Look, even that badge is nice. I love that badge. Um, so um, I'm gonna give the quality, uh, I've just done quality, haven't I? 10 out of 10. Uh, quality 10 out of 10. I missed fun. It's got a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to give that 10 out of 10 as well. So overall, you listen to that seagull down. He's, he's very busy. He's having a busy day. Um, total of 46 out of 50, which gives the boat a whopping 92%. So I really do rate this boat. If you can afford to go the extra mile, then this one should be on your short list. I thought you said you cleaned it. I did, but it didn't tell me to clean under the platform. We got a lift, you know what these boats are like, you've got to lift all the nooks and crannies up. Who's it, what's this, your towel from yeah. home or something? Yeah. Well, you didn't say, you just said take the covers off, get rid of the water. Yeah, but you've got to lift up this, this, this little step, haven't you? Looks nice, doesn't it? What are you doing? Yeah, that's the platform. What are you doing, Dave? It's lovely, isn't it? Why well, you got your woolly hat on, mate? It's April. It's freezing cold. It's not. It's summer's coming, mate. <laughs>